Yo, hey guys, Bleaks here, back with another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about 10 things I wish I knew when I started Hero the Hammer Watch. So this is going to be, you know, for some beginner players, but even intermediate or advanced players could maybe benefit from this. And you can also take this as like a general tips and tricks. It's all the same thing, but basically I'm going to go over 10 things that uh, I wish I knew when I first started the game. Number 10. All right gonna start off with number 10 and this one is basically gonna be game settings so the first thing you can see my current resolution how far I can see on the screen it's not super great I can see basically to this wall so I'm gonna line that up just so you can see the difference I go into the game options or sorry the graphics options we're gonna change the resolution so this is on the max resolution as you change it uh, the zoom in and out of the camera should adjust so I know one that works really well for me is this 1360 by 768. Anyway, um, so I changed that. That's the first thing you want to change is the resolution just to make it to where you can see much more on the screen so you can see all kinds of things. Some other options you might want to look at as far as graphics go um, would be you can mess around with the brightness and like the shadows and like different ones give you different amounts of light and just the way like you can see things in the game so i would just really go through here and adjust because you can make it in a way where you don't have shadows and you can see like anywhere secrets could be you don't really have to have lights in all that area if you want to um this is not something i'm really going to do so i'm just going to reset it and the rest of the stuff you can kind of just mess around with as far as these settings go i'm also going to look at some of the other settings so if we look at the actual game settings there will be couple good ones I would definitely recommend using the aim guide and I'll show that off in a second the key count which I'll show that off in a second mini map and what else do I like to use this is kind of up to you if you want the floating text or not um, I usually don't have remote damage numbers which is just damage done by another players local damage numbers I can kind of take it or leave it and I'll show off each one real quick all right so first the aim guide that's this little line that's you know directing towards my cursor now it just allows you to see what direction your character is facing so if there was a ton of enemies and i'm you know hugging the wall then i still know that my my melee is going this way or if i'm in a corner like this i still know or if i get confused it's actually going to flip it around so you know that you need to change the orientation also now you see i have a key count at the top a lot of people ask how you change the key count that's how you would do it and then the minimap. Uh, I enjoy using the minimap so I don't have to tab all the time. I can kind of just look over at a glance and see what's going on. And then I can use tab in addition to that. Damage numbers, you can see sometimes they get kind of long. So sometimes I will go in and actually just, your local damage numbers is what the damage you do are. So I'm gonna put that as no, and that should make them go away. Yeah, so now it's just clean. Uh, I can always see everything that's going on. So those are the main settings I would uh, look at, but definitely look at all of them just to make sure. All right, for number nine, what I want to talk about are the controls of the game. So we're doing pretty basic stuff so far, but you want to go into the controls, and this is what I recommend. I recommend you change three different settings. The active skill three and four, I would change this to something on your mouse if possible. If you're using a controller, you don't really have to worry about this, but you basically always want to be able to use WASD at any time without having to like move your hand. So what happens when it's just on the default of Q and E, if you're strafing left and right with your uh, ring finger or your index finger, let's say you're strafing left using the A key uh, with your ring finger, you are unable to hit the Q, uh, the Q key with your ring finger. And the same goes if you're going uh, to the right and trying to hit E. So you can't use all your skills when you wanna use your skills. And the other one is this use button here. Normally this default is F. So again, if you're using the D key to move, you can't use F without taking your finger off the D key and onto the F key. So I've remapped those to my mouse buttons and my mouse scroll up and down. And I can kinda of show you what that means. So that means I can always be moving and I can, you know, grappling hook, 
I can smoke bomb without my character stopping. So it seems like a small thing, but it, it really helps out with just not having to worry about certain things like that. Because uh, I've definitely had times before I knew this existed where I tried to, you know, I'm trying to grappling hook and I have a lot of enemies following me. I'm trying to go into here really quickly and I can't. I have to move my finger off and hit the F key or I need to run away while smoke bombing and that will stun the enemies back here. Well, you know, it allows me to get some distance. So that's definitely something I would look at to see if you can remap your keys. Also, I mean, you can do really quick things like this. Like I'm going to jump to the portal and go into the portal very quickly. So, you know, that's like basically as quick as you can do. Also just picking up items. I can move around, pick up these items and just spam my mouse wheel and, uh, any chance I get to pick up the item so I can pick it up. All right, number eight. So number eight is going to be corner pulling. So basically what that means is you grab some enemies and you go to the corner and you attack at the corner. What this does is troublesome enemies will have to come over here to like fight with you. And it gives you the chance of hitting them before they can hit you. Also, if your character has any ability to stun or anything like that, it just like helps out a lot with uh, killing enemies. So I'll show it again if I can. So I come up here and I hug the bottom. And as you see, all the enemies have to come up here and I hit them before they even have a chance. I mean, I'm over leveled for this, but uh, it's really like the, the idea behind it. The only thing I want to say is that this is deceiving and this can be like a, another part, but basically it looks like the wall ends here, but it really doesn't or maybe I should go up here so there's nothing great. It looks like the wall ends here, but it doesn't. It actually ends down here. So if you're trying to corner pull to this corner, you're going to have a bad time because the enemies are going to come up here and then they're going to shoot you from here because they can they can see you. They can't see you here and they have to come all the way around because you're right at the corner. But if you're up here, they can see you because this isn't actually a wall. This is, you know, an angle. So just uh, something to keep in mind. Okay, let's move on to number seven. So... Here is just a little thing that is quirky with the game, I guess, just how it works. Uh, so I can go visit a, a merchant, and until I talk to the merchant, we don't know what items he has. The game doesn't know, and the way the merchant generates the items is it will not generate an item that you currently have. But right now I've talked to him, so I've generated these items. So I can say I want to buy, like, two of these items, but I let's say I didn't have enough money to buy a third, and I'm gonna go around the level and try to collect enough gold to buy the third. So what happens in that case is you have the chance of generating one of these items somewhere in the level. Uh, so if there was an item I really wanted, but the other ones I didn't, let's say I really want Spellbook, but um, Cape of Withdrawal and Cal of Protection, I just do not want, you know, for any reason. So I'm going to specifically get gold to get Spellbook. So I go around looking for gold. While I'm looking around, I find a chest and I open it. I have a chance of getting Spellbook. So what happens in that case is I get the Spellbook from the chest and then I come back to the vendor and I can no longer buy it because you can't have two of the same items. And then I'm forced to, to buy one of these other ones. So that's the thing to keep in mind is um, if you don't have a lot of money, you might want to go around the map and uh, collect money first or you can uh, just don't open any chests to generate money, but sometimes you have to because, um, you know, they're going to drop like diamonds and whatnot. Okay, moving on to number six. This tip is going to just be, it might be really obvious to some people, but not so obvious to others, is that everything in the game that you can interact with or that spawns, spawns on north-facing walls. And what do I mean by that? I mean, when your character is looking up, Whenever it spawns, it'll be on one of these walls. One of these walls that are facing towards you, so always on the north direction. So as you can see, this button spawns on the north wall. This button spawns on the north wall. Uh, we can see if we can find anything else. So, like, every secret, every crack, every bad eyes, all of that is going to spawn on the north eye, or the, uh, the north, like, walls. Um, same goes for imps. Whenever they spawn, they will always be on the north walls. 
Number five is just going to be another one of these things that might be obvious to some people, but other people just may not know. And this is going to be that monsters that spawn in the temple only uh, exist in the temple. Monsters that spawn in the pyramid only exist in the pyramid, and monsters in the tower only exist in the tower. Uh, the only exception is going to be the arena, but you can look through the bestiary when you unlock it, and you have the ones that don't have any icons are going to be the tower, this pyramid is the pyramid, and the little crescent moon is going to be the moon temple. So enemies noted with that only appear in that area, and there's no like overlap. So uh, you can see my attunements are for the tower. I only have attunements in the tower. If I wanted to go and beat the, the uh, pyramid, I would attune pyramid monsters. I would respec, attune pyramid monsters, and respec back to the tower when I go back to tower, or I would respec to the moon temple when I'm going to do moon temple. So basically, you know, you don't want to be wasting your attunement stars on different areas of the game that you don't go to all the time. So I mostly spend my time in the tower. Whenever I need to, I will go attune either the moon temple or the pyramid just to make it easier on my characters. This is going to be number four. It is going to be, there are different types of enemies in the game. And the beast area kind of tells you which ones are which. So we have beast, um, undead, aberrations, and constructs. So those kind of they correlate with the items that give you damage bonus for each ones. So if you ever don't know what enemy falls in what category, you can look it up in the beast theory. Also, the the big thing that most people don't know or have to find out the hard way is constructs. All the enemies in here, you are unable to life steal from them. They apparently don't have a life to steal, so you can't gain health or anything from the units in this category. So it's something to keep in mind if you're wondering why uh, the first boss is so hard sometimes, or you can't sustain versus him, that's the reason why. You can't life steal, specifically life steal from constructs. All right, next up is gonna be number three. So this one is one that I feel like a lot of players fall into, is they basically say I've done NG1 or NG2 in the tower, should I go and do the pyramid? Should I go and do moon temple? So the thing with the pyramid and moon temple is they are really hard compared to the tower, like very different. So um, basically the whole point of this one is the pyramid and the temple is way harder than the tower. Just uh, keep running the tower, go back when you're strong. Number two is going to be class titles. So class titles, are, they're the key to the game. Everything in the game is about these class titles. These, uh, these class titles, you need all of them in some way or another, maybe not the, uh, the priest as much, but it doesn't hurt, it's there. Um, getting armor, getting resist, attack power, gold gain, crit bonuses, mana regen, and uh, skill power, all super needed, super needed. Um, you really can't, go through the game without playing all the characters. You need all of them. You don't need all of them equally, but you definitely need all of them. And you generally want them around the same level. So as you can see, things are kind of spread out as far as my account goes. And some of this is because of statues. Some of this is just because of uh, what characters kind of shine brighter in the like mid to late game. But yeah, we'll talk all, all about that more later. But uh, guild bonuses are the key to the game. You want as many of them as possible, and it's a slow and steady grind, but every little bit you get really adds up. Number one. The number one thing that I would recommend everyone learning and knowing about the game, stuff I wish I knew better when I first started the game, is going to be the fountain and drinks. The fountain is just insanely good. You can manipulate the game so much with the fountain. If you have issues with traps, deal with traps. If you can't deal with towers, let's say you're playing a melee character and they've been killing you, take away the towers. If you can't deal with um, spawners, get rid of the spawners. If you're, there, there's just so much you can do. And if you're okay with more enemies, get more enemies. Oftentimes having uh, more 
mini bosses gives you more items there's just a lot you can do here and really learning like what kind of setups you can do and different setups for different situations is uh really important you can manipulate the game so well with this so and the second part of this one is going to be the drinks the drinks are huge so the drinks are huge in two different ways they can make the game really hard for you or really easy it, it's all about picking a drink where the upside is really good for you while also the downside you can mitigate so for example uh, this one here wicked sickness you get 200 percent damage dealt during combo minus 50 percent damage when out of combo so if you can fix combo and get 100 percent uptime you have 200 percent increased damage this one here you get 50 percent increased base health but you lose five percent of your mana while moving so if you're staying still when you're casting then you don't really need mana when you're moving you know stuff like that you can you can work where work like around these um, some other simpler ones is you know you get evasion for attack power that's easier to mitigate you get um, armor and resist for luck you can also mitigate this you get a chance to crit for armor there's lots of ways to mitigate these there's also a lot of good bonuses you can get from these you can mix and match them some of them cover each other's weaknesses and strengths uh, they're just all around the drinks are probably one of the most interesting parts of the game just because of they're all that kiss curse type of uh type of like items in the game that they really make everything interesting and let you play around with stuff that you normally couldn't all right and lastly we'll have an honorable mention honorable mention will be the statues so um at one point this was going to be one of the uh, the tips but i just moved it to an honorable mention i talked about how guild bonuses were the key to the game i'm going to say arguably statues are also key to the game but in like a different way they're basically just really overpowered um so statues just being so good uh, so good that they're to the point of being overpowered yeah these are going to be the key to the game just for for damage basically they're they're going to give you so much damage that's just going to let you cruise through the game at certain points especially you know the more and more you level them up they just get kind of compounding bonuses that just get greater and greater and greater all right guys i hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully learned something um also did i miss anything are there any things that you would say are things you wish you knew when you first started the game and if so what was it please leave it down below in the comments also like comment subscribe all that fun stuff if you have ideas for other videos you'd like to see in the future just let me know i read all the comments try to respond to everything so just uh yeah let me know hope you guys enjoyed hope you learned something until next time that's gonna be the video see ya